Human beings are inherently biased creatures. We all have our favorites, our least favorites, our likes, and our dislikes. And George R. R. Martin, the author of A Song of Ice and Fire, is no different. There are characters that he loves and tends to spend a lot of time on and develop, and there are characters he actively seems to very much dislike, and they have misfortune befall them at many odd occasions. Additionally, this tends to extend to houses as well. Martin loves the Blackwoods, but hates the Brackens, and in all of their feuds, the Blackwoods do seem to be in the right. This week, when researching for another video, I discovered something that I find quite funny, that being the house that I believe to be Martin's unintended least favorite, the unluckiest house in A Song of Ice and Fire history to an almost comical degree. Today we're going to be discussing a house that was not in the show at all, but one that has a massive role to come in the future of A Song of Ice and Fire, or at least in King's Landing. Today we are going to discuss House Rosby. House Rosby owns a swath of land in the Crown Lands, those being the areas surrounding King's Landing and not belonging to any of the other Seven Kingdoms. Their castle is called, get this, Rosby, and their sigil is quite interesting. It's very much the kind of YouTube thumbnail clickbait of sigils. It's got these three big red arrows on it. In addition to these small kind of tree and cross patterns behind them, it's difficult to discern exactly what those are. The most important part of Rosby and their lands are the food that they produce, specifically because they are a large source of food for King's Landing, and that is quite crucial in a time where the allegiance of the Reach is very much in question between Joffrey, between Stannis, between Renly, between all of these warring lords. So Rosby is something the Crown tends to want to keep close. Before we get into the history of House Rosby, there is one important note that we get from Catelyn Stark in the main series, that being that Rosbys are very much not known to be hardy. They use Constitution as their dump stat, and overall they are pretty fragile as far as just people go in Westeros, which given this is medieval times, fragile in itself is a pretty low bar. So, getting into the actual history of this house, at the time of Aegon's conquest, House Rosby being so near to King's Landing was one of the first houses to surrender to Aegon, so they pretty much immediately roll over and embrace their new dragon overlords. In turn for this loyalty, the Targaryens wage war on Dorne and fold the Rosbys in pretty directly on this. Lord John Rosby, who was the Lord of Rosby at the time, was named the Castellan of Sunspear and Warden of the Sands by Aegon Targaryen before the Dragon King left. However, during this reign, probably a month or so into it, uh, John Rosby was in a tower in Sunspear and was thrown from the window, an event known as the Defenestration of Sunspear, as he was killed by the blind Princess Maria Martell herself, the Toad of Dorne. After getting embarrassed in Dorne, the Rosbys are quiet for about 50 years before going super hard for Magor. Sir Ryford Rosby was one of the seven knights who defended King Magor I Targaryen during his trial of seven against the Faith. But Ryford was slain during this fighting, which is not surprising given the tendency of Rosbys to die. Uh, Lord Rosby at the time did remain loyal despite the death of his brother Rayford, and unfortunately this loyalty ended up getting him killed as well. Uh, Magor was found dead on the Iron Throne, and immediately after finding him, Lord Rosby drinks a cup of hemlock to join his king in death. I do kind of admire the captain goes down with the ship attitude he seems to have, but overall Rosby's just not making great decisions generally. We now arrive at the Dance of the Dragons, and I'm going to try to keep things as broad and vague as possible as to not spoil things for new viewers of House of the Dragon. At the beginning of the war, Lord Rosby is one of the lords who was imprisoned for supporting Rhaenyra Targaryen in King's Landing. However, shortly after this, he flips his allegiance to the Greens and is executed by Rhaenyra's cause immediately for doing so. This means his land passes to his younger son, and that younger son is promptly taxed by Aegon II for supporting Rhaenyra. So he kind of flipped flops throughout the war, and because of this, the Rosbys end up getting taxed, executed, and disliked by pretty much everybody on both sides. We only have two other mentions of House Rosby prior to the main series, those being one at the tourney at White Walls, where they accompany Lord Brynden Rivers in order to stop the second Blackfire Rebellion, and one very close to the start of the main series, where Lord Giles Rosby was among those offered as a possible match to Duran Martell uh, in order to wed his daughter Ariane to some noble. Ariane obviously turns this down for reasons that we will get into, because Giles, shall we say, is not the most desirable bachelor for a couple of reasons. 
We are introduced to the current Lord, Giles Rosby, in A Clash of Kings, where he's frequently seen at court, and he is always coughing. That is his defining character trait throughout his time in these books. He's often conspiring with Queen Cersei Lannister, which is interesting in terms of later events, to take Prince Tommen out of the city to protect him from Stannis Baratheon's potential invasion. This plan does get off the ground, and the, both Giles and Tommen leave the city to kind of be smuggled away, but Tyrion catches them and brings them back to the city. Uh, because of this, uh, there are numerous people imprisoned, and this loses uh, the trust of Tyrion in terms of Giles Rosby. Though with Tyrion losing power at court later in the books, he did do a good job ingratiating himself to Cersei, which will come back later. You know, word on the street is that Giles Rosby actually got that cough from not subscribing to Quinn the GM. That's strange, and I think, I think you should try to avoid that as well, just for the sake of your health. Giles then testifies at Tyrion's trial for regicide, considering the death of King Joffrey, stating that he had seen Tyrion filling Joffrey's wedding chalice. This is technically true, but I do think this statement is likely motivated by enmity against the imp. Later, in A Feast for Crows, after Tywin's death, Lord Giles is named Master of Coin by Queen Regent Cersei. He promises that there will be a statue made of Tywin Lannister at the funeral, and he attends the wedding of King Tommen, and overall serves as a voice of reason and a slight bit of coughing in any small council meeting. This is where one mysterious element of Giles Rosby starts to come up. It is noted in A Feast for Crows that Lady Felice Stokeworth and her husband, Sir Balman Birch, ask to shelter in Rosby's castle. However, they're turned away by, quote, the ward of Giles Rosby. It's kept very mysterious in the text as to who exactly this ward is, and it seems vague as to who exactly could end up being this uh, kind of crucial person in terms of Giles Rosby's affairs, as they will become fairly important later, as the other main action that Giles Rosby takes in the story, other than coughing and conspiring, is dying. He dies in a Feast for Crows, leaving the title of Master of Coin vacant, and overall opening up this squabble over the Rosby lands that becomes a massive issue in Cersei's eyes, and again pops up in the final chapter of A Dance with Dragons. A number of candidates have been presented by fans in order to be the person who will inherit the Rosby lands. The first and foremost of these is Rosby's ward, whoever they are. I've seen numerous suggestions as to who they might be, those being miscellaneous phrase, Tyrek Lannister even, if a horse could potentially be a ward, but overall that does seem to be the main candidate if we are going by logic, which it seems like Cersei might not. Additionally, Perwin and Olivar Frey are also related to the Rosbys through this marriage into the Frey line. Um, and additionally, there are a number of other people who could just be given the land. Notably, if Aegon takes King's Landing, this would be an excellent prize to give to a loyal house. Or if Cersei has her way, they'd be given to Arrain Waters, as she thinks about that at one point in the feast. Overall, it's completely unclear as to who is going to inherit these lands, and they could be very important in the event of a siege of King's Landing that might be brought on by Daenerys. There is one very interesting parallel regarding Rosby as a castle that could have a lot to do with Cersei's plot in The Winds of Winter. This section will contain pretty big House of the Dragon spoilers, so skip ahead to the next timestamp if you want to avoid those. Specifically, during Rhaenyra's fight from King's Landing, there are a number of difficulties. Specifically, she goes to Rosby as her first resort after leaving the city and finds that the castle gates are barred from her approach at the command of a young woman whose claim she had passed over in favor of a younger brother. So this could hint at Cersei having to flee King's Landing, which does seem very likely to be the Cersei plot in the Winds of Winter, potentially being barred from Rosby by whoever ends up inheriting the land. That seems to mean that maybe Giles Rosby's ward inherits it, maybe someone is appointed by Mace Tyrell or Aegon Targaryen to take over these lands, but overall it does seem to very much resemble this queen who is fleeing King's Landing after being overthrown by both the peasants and a new ruler. Overall, I think Rhaenyra and Cersei will have a fair few parallels in The Winds of Winter. There is an argument to be made that the Rosby inheritance won't come up until the very end of the series, or otherwise won't play a main role in the plot. However, the fact that it is something that is touched upon in the final chapter of A Dance with Dragons, and does have a massive part of A Feast for Crows, and is an important house to King's Landing, I would be willing to bet that we will hear at least something about who's going to be taking over this fairly important castle in the next book in A Song of Ice and Fire. Should it ever be released, assuming Martin doesn't just keep not writing pages like he did this year, it's great, it's great, I'm doing great, it's it's great. 
So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and it really helps grow the channel. I'll be back with more videos in the very near future, and I'm very excited to do even more about A Song of Ice and Fire. Hopefully, we will get news on the Winds of Winter sooner than later. Uh, that recent update was very pessimistic, and I need a little hope at this point, but we shall see. I appreciate any support, and let me know what you think of House Rosby and of this video in the comments below. I really appreciate it. I will see you all in the near future. Goodbye, everyone.